Hello, welcome to Simply Rad. Today we will discuss the concept of hyponatremia and how we can explain the three representative findings. One, the abnormal hyperintense signal in the pons. Two, the abnormal signal in the basal ganglia and thalami. And three, the restricted diffusion in the internal capsule. Hopefully by understanding the pathology, we can better remember what to expect in the imaging findings. Let's get started with hyponatremia. Hyponatremia is coupled by entry of water into the cell to balance the osmolality inside and outside the cell. This results to an increased cell volume in acute hyponatremia. To revert to the normal cell volume, the osmolites within the cell will leak out so that water will also exit. So by 48 hours, the cell volume is now normal, but at the expense of the osmolites, which are now very few inside the cell. If one was to rapidly correct the sodium levels, water will exit the cell and this rapid exit cannot be matched by the influx of osmolites, which takes time. As a result of this osmotic stress, the cell will go into apoptosis. In the brain, the highly metabolic oligodendrocytes are very sensitive to this osmotic stress. So what happens is, in the ponds where there are abundant white matter tracts, there is loss of the myelin, but the bare neurons are preserved. This is the reason for the striated appearance of the transverse pontine tracts. The pons, has two areas, the ventral and the dorsal. The ventral portion contains pontine nuclei, the corticospinal and corticobulbar tracts, and transversely crossing fibers. These transverse fibers arise from the pontine nuclei that projects to the opposite cerebellum through the middle cerebellar peduncle. The classic appearance of pontine myelinolysis is a symmetric lesion in the middle of the pons. It spares the peripheral region, which includes the corticospinal tracts. There is also sparing of the transverse pontine tracts. Under the microscope, We see that myelin is lost, but the neurons are preserved. To clean up the myelin and apoptosis byproducts, macrophages are recruited. So now we know why the pons has that appearance. Because of myelin loss, the internal capsule and other white matter tracts in the cortex can also be affected in what is called the extrapontine demyelination. Do we expect DWI restriction? Since there is oligodendrocyte apoptosis or cell death, then yes, we expect restriction. But what about the basal ganglia and thalamus? Aren't they supposed to be comprised of gray matter? How does hyponatremia affect these structures? Hyponatremia can cause injury by several mechanisms. The first is what we have just discussed, the osmotic stress resulting to oligodendrocyte injury. So this can explain the loss of myelin. But why the pons and the deep gray matter nuclei and deep white matter? 
While the definite reason is not yet known, a theory is that the pons and the basal ganglia are areas where there is intermixing of the gray and white matter. So because of this configuration, the white matter is exposed to the osmolality stresses within the capillary-rich gray matter. Another theory why the basal ganglia and thalamus are affected is that during hyponatremia, there is brain edema. And because of this edema, there is decreased cerebral perfusion and hypoxia, especially for this for these highly metabolic regions, the basal ganglia and thalamus. Lastly, another theory is that some areas of the brain are slow to recover osmolites. So if you can recall, during rapid correction of hyponatremia, the cell dies if the osmolites are slow to enter the cell to balance the osmolality. In summary, osmotic demyelination can be seen in the pons or outside the pons. Several theories try to explain this phenomenon, and the most accepted one is increased osmotic stress leading to oligodendrocyte injury and loss of myelin. A second theory to explain why deep gray matter nuclei can also be involved is due to the hypoperfusion and hypoxia brought about by brain edema. That ends our discussion. I hope this short lecture was helpful to all of you. Thank you for listening and see you on the next one.